be in that game um, dealing with an injury currently, but LeBron will be there. Dwayne Wade will be there. Draymond Green, who just recently made his return, will be there. So it should be a fascinating basketball game, as it always is, between uh, two of the best teams in the NBA, the Golden State Warriors right now. Winners of 11 straight basketball games. The Cleveland Cavaliers have put themselves um, in a position where they continue to play well. They're, what, 24-9 and nine right now, 8-2 and two in their last 10 uh, LeBron James having an absolutely spectacular season in year 15. It's hard to believe that LeBron James in year 15 is a serious uh, MVP candidate, but the guy has been absolutely spectacular. I mean, averaging 28 points, 9 assists per night, 8 rebounds per night. He is a legitimate MVP contender. I think the only person uh, who has a better MVP case right now is James Harden. Um, but for year 15, LeBron has been spectacular. Uh, the Cavs got off to a slow start. I think it was a 5-7 and seven start that they got off to, but have since put themselves in position um, where they're in the Eastern Conference. Obviously, we'll be there at the end. Um, but some other games that I'm looking forward to, um, the Sixers will be playing at New York City. you got the two unicorns and Ben Simmons <laughs> and uh, Kristaps Porzingis uh, in that basketball game, a matchup of two very young uh, but talented basketball teams, the process, Joel Embiid. Uh, oh, yeah. I've enjoyed watching him play this year uh, as he continues to be relatively healthy this year for the 76ers, which has been important for them as they continue their maturation process uh, as a basketball team. Obviously, they're dealing with the injury of Markel Fultz not playing um, with this basketball team right now, but uh, I think that should be a very fun matchup. That's the early game on Christmas Day with Philadelphia playing against New York. Uh, and then one of the late games, uh, the Houston Rockets, as we mentioned, MVP candidate James Harden having a spectacular season, taking on the Oklahoma City Thunder, who were struggling um, in the early part of the season but have played better as of late. Obviously, the reigning defending MVP and Russell Westbrook, uh, the triple-double machine that he is, uh, will be a featured matchup against the Houston Rockets, uh, who are dealing with injury with Chris Paul, who didn't play last night against the Clippers, dealing with the adductor injury. So... Um, some really cool matchups, though, on Christmas Day. Um, the Sixers and the Knicks, obviously the Cavs and the Warriors, we know what they are, potentially on a collision course for Warriors cast part four um, <laughs> this coming summer. Um, but I'm interested to see how the Oklahoma City Thunder continue to play and respond uh, as they continue to mesh with you know Paul George and Carmelo Anthony, uh, who recently made his return out to New York City. didn't go as well as he thought it would. Um, but it should be some really cool matchups on Christmas Day. I'm looking forward to seeing how the rest of this NBA season, the unofficial beginning of the NBA season uh, as we get into January um, and then get closer to the All-Star break. Yeah, and I definitely agree with you with the unofficial beginning because I'm not really following the NBA yet. Cowboys are still in the hunt. Right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> NFL still going on. You got playoffs to come in the NFL. I'm not even that closely watching college basketball. I'm a big college basketball fan uh, as a matter of fact, North Carolina's on playing uh, Ohio State right now at this moment. But I think the, the NBA does a good job, though, at, at really taking a hold of, of Christmas Day. Now, the only unfortunate thing, though, is uh, Christmas is on Monday, which means you're going to have a slate of NBA games and you're going to have NFL games, Monday Night Football. I believe there's a doubleheader. So it's, uh, it, it's amazing how... When, thing, when 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 the holidays fall on different days, the different sports you have, which I think it's it's fun, it's because I'm a, I'm a huge sports fan as well as Kevin is, um, and I want to give a shout out to Antonio Wilborn in the chat room. He says goat. Uh, I believe he's talking about Kobe. Um, now he's a he's a second tier goat because he's below <laughs> Jordan. Okay, I know you may not. I don't, I'm not. I'm not sure how old you are, but you may not remember Jordan that much. But he's below Jordan. Um, no doubt about that. And uh, Kesey says, uh, Kev, y'all in the BS3 lab. Yes, we are. Uh, like, in the, like in the old Source magazine. That's right. In the lab. We are in the lab, Casa de la Studio. Uh, so, next up I wanted to talk about, you got Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, among the Hall of Fame candidates for 2018. Also on the list, you have Ray Allen, Chauncey Billups, uh, Rip Hamilton, and Grant Hill. To me, this is a a very interesting list. I think uh, Ray Allen is in. There's no doubt about that. Jason Kidd is in. Steve Nash, uh, the numbers that he put up, the MVPs that he's gotten, 
Uh, never actually got a championship, but I think he's in. The interesting three is going to be Chauncey Billups, and I want to get you guys' thoughts on this as well. Chauncey Billups, Rip, and Grant Hill. To me, Chauncey Billups is a no. I don't think he's done enough. I don't know what his necessarily his numbers look like, but I, I just don't think he's done enough. I think uh, Rip Hamilton is a no to me too. Uh, Grant Hill, I'm leaning towards yes. I think his longevity in the game, I know he had a lot of injury seasons, but he, I, had, I believe he had seven All-Stars, and I, don't, I, I think I put Grant Hill in. Uh, but Kevin, I definitely want to see where you stand in these new candidates for 2018. Yeah, for sure, Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, Ray Allen are first ballot Hall of Famers. I mean, Ray Allen, um, if I remember correctly, still the all-time three-point leader uh, in NBA history. Jason Kidd, an NBA champion. Uh, Steve Nash, a two-time league MVP. Um, they are first ballot Hall of Famers, no question. And I don't think that there should be any uh, discussion about Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, or Ray Allen being first ballot um, Hall of Famers. Ray Allen's dealing with some personal things these days. <laughs> right. He's got to get worked out, so he's not necessarily in the Hall of Fame of life right now. Um, but it's an interesting case when you start looking at the other three, though. When you start looking at Richard Hamilton, Chauncey Billups, uh, and most notably Grant Hill. Grant Hill is kind of the guy, if you're looking for a comparison sport to sport, he his comparison to me is a lot like Terrell Davis. Now, there was a lot of controversy around Terrell Davis and his Hall of Fame candidacy uh, going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And to me, Grant Hill is in a similar boat with Terrell Davis. Yes, Terrell Davis had a couple of spectacular seasons, um, obviously a, a two, over 2,000-yard rushing season, uh, league MVP in the National Football League, a Super Bowl champion. Uh, Grant Hill had very good seasons, but his career was always marked by uh, his ankle problems and his ability to never be fully healthy. And the fact that he was able to be a seven-time All-Star, uh, a guy who was a five-time All-NBA performer, was a former uh, Rookie of the Year in the NBA, a guy who averaged nearly 17 points per game. His numbers say that he's potentially a Hall of Famer, but does the longevity of a Grant Hill, who had a better, definitely better second half of his career, uh, give him enough to put him uh, in the Hall of Fame right away? I don't know if he necessarily gets in right away. He may be one of those guys that may have a, had to have a couple of cycles um, before he actually gets in. Um, but the longevity, I think, is what I question most about Grant Hill's candidacy, but by the numbers, you know, his numbers say that he's potentially a Hall of Famer and worthy of candidacy in the Pro Basketball Hall of Fame, but I don't think he gets in first ballot uh, right away, especially when you have three shoe-in Hall of Famers and Jason Kidd, Steve Nash, and Ray Allen, uh, who will definitely go in uh, this first time, first time around. Yes, and I think that's it's excellent point you brought up with, with Terrell Davis. I don't think he should have got in. And here's the other interesting thing. Roger Craig, I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are familiar with him, is not in the Hall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Roger Craig has more has better stats than Terrell Davis. I think I believe he has more Pro Bowls, more championships, but he's not in the Hall of Fame. So I think a lot of this is, does the writer like the athlete. Whoever does the votes, do they like the person? To me, that's the reason why T.O.'s not in. That's the reason why I, I, I would hope Randy Moss would get in, but I don't know. Some people may not like him. Some people may think that he is not uh, a nice guy or whatever whatever you want to say. But to me, that that's that, that's a coward. That's a cowardly act. This These athletes who have the stats, who have the championships, put them in. Who cares if you don't like them? Who cares if they were a cancer in the locker room. Did they put up numbers? And I think that is a huge part of this the, this Hall of Fame voting. A lot of the time, it is the writers, yeah. and they may not like the person. Yeah. And so that, that's going to go into this, too. Yeah, because it's a travesty that Terrell Owens is not in the Hall of Fame. That is, yeah. he was a first battle Hall of Fame that should have been in year one. It's a travesty that Terrell Owens is still not uh, in the Hall of Fame. So to your point, it does not matter what kind of... This isn't the Hall of Fame of character. This is the Hall of Fame <laughs> of did you put up the numbers that were worthy of a Hall of Fame you know, candidacy. And to your point, Terrell Owens should be in the Hall of Fame. No definitely, question. Definitely. 
So we, we got a little bit of a of a comeback from Antonio Wilborn in the chat room. He says Jordan was the first of his kind, which makes everyone say he's the one, but Kobe was more skilled than Jordan. Oh, oh man. Here we go. We, we, I don't think we got all, I don't think we got enough time to get oh, into that conversation. Man. But oh. I'm a, I'm gonna say I'm still gonna say no. I think Jordan Jordan could do everything. Yes, Kobe can do everything. They are very close. But Jordan is Jordan. Jordan is in a class of his own. He he just is. I think you look at Kobe's fadeaway game, comparable to Jordan. And it, and, his, and Jordan and Kobe's fadeaway game got better towards the end of his career. He wasn't a great fadeaway shooter at the beginning. Neither was Jordan though either. But Jordan, to me, just has that that mentality that nobody else has. Kobe's very close, but again. And I think it's I think it's an error thing too. I think it depends on what era you grow up mm-hmm. in. Because some people say Bill Russell is 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 the best of all time. I don't know Bill Russell. All I know of, of him now is the the guy with the straggly beard that's always at the dunk contest. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think that it's it's all about the air. But I'm a Jordan guy. Yeah, I, I, I'm a Jordan guy. I mean, the the thing is, okay, and, and I think, and I don't agree with much of what Colin Cowherd says on a daily basis. But one thing I think he did get right earlier this week, he said that Kobe was an MJ light. Everything that Kobe did and tried to pattern his game after was after Michael Jordan. And the thing is, for me, the way, and I know folks all, and this is always the big contention point when it comes to comparing Michael's greatness to folks like LeBron and Kobe. But I always have to throw it in is the global impact that Michael had, not just on the game of basketball, but in sport itself. Everyone wanted to be like Mike, whether it it was a Gatorade commercial or whether it was uh, the way that he walked, the way that he talked, and the way that he carried himself on the court. Michael was skilled in every aspect of the game. People forget Michael was a former defensive player of the year way back when. This is a guy who defensively was one of the best in the NBA. I know Kobe had his moments and had his time as one of the better defenders in the league, but everything that Kobe did was a pattern after Michael. And you have to acknowledge the fact that, yes, for a generation of folks, Kobe was their Michael. But if you look at the totality of their game, the completeness of their game, uh, Michael, to me, still rises above Kobe uh, when it comes to their their games themselves. Kobe will be the closest thing that we will ever see to a Michael Jordan, uh, but you can't outdo Michael. The brashness, the cockiness that Kobe came with as a young kid, uh, Michael had a lot of the same, but Jordan's game, to me, was just much more complete, and it got better as his career went on, and he went out much better and I think Kobe did, especially when he had the injuries in those last couple of years um, before he ultimately retired. But it's always going to be a debate. The Kobe stand, the Michael stands, the LeBron stands. <laughs> um, but I, I can understand why a generation would feel that Kobe is a better player than Michael. But for those who watch Michael and Kobe and now LeBron, mm-mm, it's, still, <laughs> it's, still, it's still Jordan for me. Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, and, and that's an ongoing discussion that will yes. go on probably for forever till the end of time. Till the end yes. of time. Yes. Him, you know, Jordan, LeBron, and Kobe. Um, so I'm gonna move on to the next topic. We can go <laughs> on to that for a long time. But the big three, the big three is making more news. They made some more news this week in signing Baron Davis, uh, the great Baron Davis. I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, he grew up in, I believe he grew up in L.A. Um, so I'm a big fan of his, went to UCLA. But Baron Davis is now signing with the big three. So you're going to have him in the league. Also, Metal World Peace is already there. And I believe Baron Davis is going to be a co-captain uh, with DeMar, uh, DeMar Johnson. So the big three is doing big things. They've also, Josh Childress got signed from the big three to the NBA. So the big three to me is is here to stay. Uh, they're not trying to compete with the NBA, but players that no longer play in the NBA are very welcome to come over to the Big Three. There's been rumors of KG maybe coming. Uh, there's been rumors of uh, Chauncey Billups possibly coming because uh, he, he he didn't want to take that job with the Cavs. Uh, there's also rumors that Kobe may even one day want to come. So there, there's, to me, this is a... I think a, a niche that Ice Cube has found that people are going to want to watch. It's half court. It's fun. 
Now, they're, they're accused of taking this idea from someone.